Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Thank you for uh, coming in and uh, hit the like button if you like and subscribe. It does help my channel and I appreciate you and God bless you and you are a blessing. Well, we've got one lined up here now with Mr. Gates. Foundation Fund Studies to Curb Vaccine Hestensy. Don't hesitate, in other words. His testancy. Uh, such words. Oh well, let's go down. Researchers funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation published a study analyzing ways to convince the population to take COVID-19 and HIV vaccines. The study, which was published in August, is entitled Overcoming Vaccine Hesitation for future COVID-19 and HIV vaccines. Lessons from measles and HPV vaccines. As the title suggests, the study discusses challenges posted in the past when the government tries to administer measles and human, oh boy, papillomavirus. virus. <laughs> Papilloma virus. HPV vaccines in the hopes of more effectively persuading the public to take COVID-19 and HIV vaccines in the future. The researchers stress that the most successful approaches are context specific and concluded that the best strategy directly target the population with financial incentives being particu particularly in effect with improving vaccine uptake. Message framing is a powerful tool for vaccine promotion. However, messages should be carefully framed and should be targeted to the population of interest, wrote the researchers. Financial incentives, free of charge vaccines, the use of vaccine champions should be considered in future vaccine promotions as they were successful in increasing both measles and HPV vaccine covered coverage rates. Critics of the study point out that there have been a string of reports linking the COVID-19 vaccine to myocarditis, a condition causing inflammation of the heart muscle. I read that a long time ago. Symptoms range from shortness of breath, chest pain to heart failure and death. While not openly admitting the link between COVID-19 vaccines and myocarditis, cardias, the American Heart Association did issue a report admitting that research is less certain on the risk of myocarditis, myocarditis in younger demographics. Young men are particularly at risk. In men younger than 40 years old, the number of excess myocarditis events per million people were higher after the second dose of mRNA-1273 then after a positive SARS COV2 test 97 95% CI91 through 99 versus 16 95 CL 12 through 18 the study found while women experience a similar number of excess myocarditis events after the second dose. Myocarditis. Is that what that is? Myocarditis. That's what that word is. Okay, now I've got it. <laughs> Bill Gates has been active in his quest to end vaccine hesitancy, appearing on a number of media programs over the last few years to advocate for the COVID-19 vaccine. Now there is a video here. I'm not sure if you could hear it. And uh, every time I poke on something like that <laughs> or click on it, it don't work for me. <clears throat> well, let's see what he's got to say if I can make it work. I can't make it work. I don't understand that. I'm on cam. 
I'm on the computer. Why can't I get a video? Well, anyway. I think the small part of this story is they want you to get the poke, the jab. You know, <clears throat> it's up to you. It's your decision. But if you've already had the shot, you had no problems, maybe you had number two, number three, maybe you even got the booster, I would sure think again about getting another one. Really. That, that's just my, my, my advice, my strategy, I should say. If it were me, I never got one. I never will get one. I already have congestive heart failure from my thyroid. So I'm not going to uh, risk my life or having another heart episode like I had. No, I will not do that. So let's go on to the next one. Just think very carefully about such a big decision. And to me, that is a big decision. I would think it through. Let's go to this one that I've got opened here. And we'll see what uh, Biden's got to say. And Biden announces another aid package for Ukraine. Well, here goes some more of your money, taxpayers. The amount of U.S. dollars sent to Ukraine under Biden's recent authorization has reached an all-time high. News circulates quickly. To stay up to date, subscribe, enable notifications, and never miss a story. Yeah. Keep tabs on it, in other words. Since February, when the conflict in Ukraine first started, Ukraine has made enormous strides toward kicking Russia's butt across the field. Now that Russia has deployed an additional 300,000 troops and particularly declared war, Ukraine will need all hands on deck. Reports Washington Examiner. And Ukraine will get an additional 625 million in military help from the United States, according to Secretary of State Ant Antony Blinken's announcement on Tuesday. Antony, A-N-T-O-N-Y, Antony Blinken's announcement on Tuesday. With the help provided on Tuesday, the United States has now stopped pro providing Ukraine with weaponry and equipment since August of last year. U.S. military aid to Ukraine has exceeded $16.8 billion since Russia invaded the country some seven months ago. This package has 1,655 mm howitzers, H-O-W-I-T-Z-E-R, howitzers, 75,155 mm artillery rounds, 500 precision guided 155 mm artillery rounds in addition to four high mobility art artillery rocket system symptoms systems and related ammunition. I get hyper, you know. I'll explain later. The High Mars system has been credited for enabling Ukraine to fend off the Russian troops. Well, that's awesome. You know, but we have helped them and helped them. And that lady minister or whoever she is calls up Biden and cries on his shoulder and he divvies over more billions. She's got him right where she wants him and she knows it. So she keeps begging and begging and begging and Biden caves right on in. There goes some more money. The information was released following the U.S. response in Ukraine's NATO, NATO application. Oh, I get so upset. According to Next News Network, Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor for the White House, says Ukraine's push for a quick accession into NATO should come later. Since our view is that the best way for us to support Ukraine is through practical on-the-ground support in Ukraine. 
Sullivan told reporters on Friday that the request, which Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, V-O-L-O-D-Y-M-Y-R, Volodymyr Zelensky, announced hours earlier, should be taken up at a different time. If Ukraine joined NATO, World War III would be unavoidable. Sending over $17 billion to a country to fight against Russia seems counterproductive to our efforts to reduce inflation at home given the state of the American economy today. <clears throat> no words. No words. Let's go on to the next one I have here. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I just don't have no words. My thoughts are there, but in order for me to explain them, I could maybe get in a whole lot of trouble. <sighs> EcoHealth Alliance has been awarded over 650000 in a grant from the National Institutes of Health. NIH to aid in coronavirus research. According to the grant description, the grant was approved on September 21st by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, which is run by Dr. Anthony Fucci. Fucci and Echo Health Alliance, along with his president, Peter Daszak, have been in the headlines for the controversial work at the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China, which may have speculated led to the COVID-19 outbreak. Of particular concern has been their gain of function research over which Senator Rad Paul, Republican of Kentucky, has eviscerated, eviscerated, eviscerated Fuji in congregational hearings. That's E V I S. C E R A T E D. Eviscerated. <clears throat> Excuse me. For Fuji, for his part, has denied that Dazak and his research team conducted gain of function research. Emails were later leaked showing Dazak thanking Fuji for publicly defending him. Despite the controversy, the government is moving forward with funding for DAZAC and Equal Health Alliance Coronavirus Research. The grant notes that the research will be conducted in Myanmar, Laos, Laos, M Y A N M A R, Myanmar, Laos, and Vietnam, as those are the areas of grievous concern another virus spillover from wildlife into the human population. The over, overarching goal of our work is to analyze the behavioral and environmental risk factors for spillover of novel COVSs, identified wildlife to human spillover events, access the risk and drivers of community transmission and spread, and test potential public health interventions to disrupt spillover and spread, read the grant description. Many Republicans are not happy about the grant. Senator Joni Ernst, Republican of Iowa, introduced a bill last week to prohibit the government from funding Echo Health Alliance, giving taxpayer money to Echo Health to study pandemic prevention is like paying a suspected arsonist to conduct a fire safety inspections. Ernest stated. NIH got it right when it canceled the funding for the experiments Echo Health Alliance was conducting with China's state-run Wahoo Wuhan Institute. In addition to violating multiple federal laws, Echo Health has still not turned over documents about these dangerous studies that NIH has requested on multiple occasions that could offer vital clues to the origin origins of the COVID-19 pandemic, Ernst added. And that's right. That is right. Why ain't they turning them over? 
What are they hiding? House Energy and Commerce Committee Republican leader Kathy McMorris Rogers echoed Ernst's uh, sentiments in a recent statement. Echo Health Alliance and Peter Daszak should not be getting a dime of taxpayers' funds until they are completely transparent, Rogers said. This further intensifies our extensive commitment on the Energy and Com Commerce Committee to ensure accountability from the National Institutes of Health for its role in supporting taxpayer-funded risky research without proper oversight of its guarantees, of its grantees, G-R-A-N-T-E-E-S, -E -E grantees. The NIH must restore trust with the American people who deserve every assurance that research dollars are spent with the highest standards of integrity, transparency, biosafety standards that meet the goal of preventing the next pandemic, she concluded. Good for her, but will she get anywhere? Now they're going to go, and I got a picture that I will post on my thumbnail where they've got bats in cages. They're going to take those bats now and they're going to do whatever they have to do to them to make sure that they're not carrying the virus. But then here in another video, just two, two days ago, I thought he said, Fuji said, that bats weren't responsible, that it was a man-made virus. Correct. It's exactly what I read. And it came right out of Fuji's mouth. But now they're going to do whatever they do to them poor bats, which I don't like bats. They're nothing to be afraid of, though. And you know it's against law to kill them in some states. Because uh, they eat the bugs and stuff that could really hurt you and give you diseases. And bats have been given a bad rap. I was always scared they'd get caught in my hair. I lived in a house that had bats. In fact, I lived in two houses uh huh, that had bats. And it scared me to death they'd get caught in my hair. And I shut the bedroom door on my little boy because I didn't want them getting in his bedroom. He was in bed sleeping. But they've been given a bad rap. They're nothing to be feared of. But in some states, and because you just, it's against law to kill them. My goodness. Yeah. And Fuji is $5 million richer. Here it is right here. And it's in a video. It's in one of my videos I did about two, three days ago. Yeah. I won't read it all over again, but it's right here, Dr. Fuji. They made money, him and his wife. Hand over fist. Oh, yes. For the COVID outbreak. Pharmaceuticals. Doctors. Who gave the jab? Oh, they all got rich. Don't doubt yourself on that. And when the patients got the shots, most of them got sicker than whatever and died. And they want you to keep taking the jab because they get rich that way. Mm. Shut up, Betty. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, I believe that will be all for me tonight. Stay safe. And just think very seriously about what you're going to decide to do about anything. Double think it. Triple think it. You know, stay safe. And that's going to be it for me tonight. And hopefully tomorrow I'll be back with some new videos. Not sure what they're all going to be about. I'm kind of getting tired, to be honest, about all this war and all this 
vaccine and jabs and rules and restrictions. It's just getting too much. God bless. I love you all and just remember you are a blessing. Good night.